On last week's weekly boiler tip, we talked about the importance of wiring diagrams. But if we don't have a wiring diagram, what can we do now to streamline troubleshooting in the future? And, and one thing that we can do is test limits, which we need to do anyway, but when we test those limits, make notes um, because there are essentially two limit circuits that constitute 90% of our boiler failures. We're out on a gas pressure switch or we're out on an operating pressure switch. Um, a flame safeguard control will identify which of those limits we're in by going into a standby mode or going into a lockout mode. So if we simply trip the boiler on each individual limits and kind of make a laundry list of what response we get to each limit trip, then we'll basically have a cheat sheet for the future so when we're down on a particular limit string, we at least know which switches we can check. So I'll demonstrate that by tripping this boiler on high steam pressure. So I'm increasing the pressure. We're gonna trip on this switch. There we've shut down. We've gone to post purge. And then standby. So our operating pressure limit, OPL, um, is in our standby circuit. So that's one of the candidates to troubleshoot if we're in a standby mode. If I disable my blower motor during purge, our blower motor starter interlock is going to trip us out. So we're going to get a lockout interlock. So we'll add that to our lockout list. If we blow down the boiler and trip it on the primary low water cutoff, We're back to standby. Now I'm going to trip the high gas pressure switch. We've gone into standby again. Okay, so now that we've tripped all the limits on the board, we basically have a list of what switches are in each interlock circuit. And so we haven't cut in half what we need to check, but we've definitely minimized what we need to check for getting a running interlock fault. So. Not as good as having a diagram, but better than having nothing. <laughs>